Giant sequoia trees are indeed the skyscrapers of the natural world. Imagine yourself for a moment walking among these gigantic trees. These mesmerizing giants will make you feel like you are in a supernatural world. In our ever-changing world, they remain as they are. Defying the spirit of time, they show us the wisdom of nature. They prove that nature is magnificent and eternal. Now, get ready for an extraordinary journey. These old sages have a lot to tell. Giant sequoia trees are found in the state of California in the western United States. They grow in a strip of forest on the western slopes of California's Sierra Nevada mountain range. Sequoia National Park and Kings Canyon National Park are home to many of the world's largest trees. This area is especially popular with visitors during the summer months. Giant sequoias have very specific climate requirements. When there is no rainfall, giant sequoia groves are fed by streams, swamp water, and underground moisture from higher ground. These trees need plenty to thrive. They live in favorable climatic temperatures so they can be damaged by extreme cold and hot weather. The only remaining natural habitat for giant sequoias in the world is in California. One of the most important characteristics of sequoia trees is their height. Giant sequoias are relatives of the world's tallest tree, the Hyperion tree. A coastal sequoia known as the Hyperion tree is the tallest living tree, standing 115 meters tall. Giant sequoias generally do not reach this height. However, giant sequoias cover a very large area in terms of volume. Named after General William Tecumseh Sherman, who took part in the American Civil War, the General Sherman tree is 31 meters in circumference at its base. The maximum diameter of the base is 11 meters. It weighs approximately 1,900 tons. This makes it the largest living non-clonal organism. It's the equivalent of almost 400 elephants. It is at least 10 times larger than the world's largest living animal, the blue whale. The height of the tree is 83.8 meters. Although the General Sherman tree is the largest in both volume and mass, it is not the oldest tree. It is estimated to be at least 2,200 years old. It was probably in its youth during the Roman Republic. Although the General Sherman tree is very large in volume, it is shorter in height than some other giant sequoias. Giant sequoias don't grow as tall as coast redwoods, but they can still grow up to 100 meters high. Other famous giant sequoias include the General Grant tree, the second largest giant sequoia, the President tree, the third largest giant sequoia, and the Tunnel tree. The President tree is also the oldest known giant sequoia at 3,200 years old. These trees were once thought to be the oldest trees in the world. But when the rings of the trees were examined, it turned out that they were less than 4,000 years old. Although giant sequoias are not the oldest trees, they can live up to 3,000 years. This is a very long time for humans. Imagine that a giant sequoia tree sprouted 3,000 years ago. This tree witnessed the American Civil War, America's first colonies, America's first settled civilizations, and hundreds of natural events across the continent. These giants can't speak, but their massive trunks speak volumes. So, what is the secret of this long life? Giant sequoias are masters of self-preservation. The main secret of their survival for thousands of years is their ability to protect themselves against natural threats. The tannic acid in the sap of this tree protects against harmful parasites, fights against fungal rot, and acts as a defense against low-intensity fires. On the other hand, these trees have a thick bark that protects their trunks. The outer bark of giant sequoia trees is the thickest in the world. Some large trees have bark more than half a meter thick. This bark is resistant to fires. It also lacks the resin found in many tree species, which quickly catches fire. The giant sequoia is a coniferous tree. Its needle-like leaves can catch fire easily. However, the leaves of the trees grow at the top of the tree. This can keep flames from coming from lower down. Giant sequoias are not only majestic and beautiful, but also ecologically valuable. They have a unique ecosystem. They store a lot of carbon and help regulate the climate. They provide habitat and food for many animals such as insects, squirrels, woodpeckers, bears, and deer. They are also home to rare species such as the California condor. Although giant sequoias are generally fire resistant, they are facing more fires due to the climate crisis and human settlements. Fires, especially after lightning strikes, are more difficult to extinguish because they are higher up and spread faster. These fires were much more difficult to control in the past. So, people would deliberately cut down or burn these trees out of fear. But as dangerous as fires are, they are also necessary. So, how can something as destructive as fire be beneficial for these trees? This is a question of their reproduction. Giant sequoias don't grow from roots. Despite their gigantic size, they are trees that grow from seeds. So the biggest tree in the world was actually born from a tiny seed. The seeds of these trees are very small. 
91,000 seeds weigh 1 kilogram. These tiny seeds are responsible for all reproduction. By the time the average giant sequoia reaches adulthood, it is about 58 billion times the size of the tiny seed from which it was born. Giant sequoias begin to produce cones more intensively between 150 and 200 years of age. A tree can produce 1 billion seeds in its lifetime. Most seeds are eaten by animals or rot in the soil. Only a few seeds germinate and produce seedlings. Only a fraction of these seedlings get a chance to grow. The seeds are preserved inside these cones. These seeds can remain in the cones for up to 20 years without seeing any light. Chicory or Douglas squirrels turn brown after collecting the cones. It is imperative that the seeds have direct contact with the soil. These light seeds need bare soil, sunlight, and moisture to germinate. Fire plays an important role in creating these conditions as it clears the forest floor of debris and exposes the soil. Fires open the cones on the forest floor and release the seeds into the soil. But if the fire is too severe or intense, it can also destroy the seeds. Fire also leaves behind nutrient-rich ash in which seedlings can thrive. Forest rangers used to try to put out all fires but they wondered why new trees were not growing. It took a long time for forest rangers to realize that fires can also have regenerative benefits. Now they control fires accordingly. Today, these trees are getting more attention at both the state and national level. There are more than 70 giant sequoia groves in the region. Although our lifespan is longer than many animals, our place in world history is actually much shorter. Long-lived organisms are not very common in nature. Sequoias are among these rare creatures. Redwood trees have been around for 200 million years. These trees were the real rulers of nature as the continents were forming, dinosaurs were roaming around, the first humans were spreading around the world and the Ice Age was beginning. It is known that redwood trees were common in the Northern Hemisphere until before the Ice Age. Sequoia fossils have been found in many places, especially in Europe. However, when the last Ice Age ended, redwoods became extinct in many places. There are only three species of redwood trees today. Giant sequoia trees, scientific named sequoia dendron giganteum, and coast redwood trees, scientific named sequoia sempervirens, are found in California. Dawn redwood trees, whose scientific name is metasequoia glyptostroboids, are found in remote areas of southwest China. It is thought that the giant sequoias that live on the slopes of the Sierra Nevada mountain range today were dragged here about two million years ago. The Indians living in the region benefited from these trees. They used these to build their homes and meet their daily needs. This situation was not at a level that would destroy the forests. Because the population was not very dense and there was no city structure like today, they generally used fallen and rotting trees. However, local people were afraid of frequent fires. So sometimes they deliberately cut down trees to keep fires away. However, such activities were not systematic. The reason for this was that the indigenous people lived more closely with nature and were highly dependent on it. Moreover, according to the belief of the locals, these trees were spiritual beings. The real destructive process began with the arrival of European settlers. Communities, especially those of Hispanic origin, were settling in California. The declaration of the California Republic after the Bear Flag Rebellion of June 14, 1846 accelerated the urbanization of the region. However, the real momentum came with the discovery of gold. When gold was discovered in Northwest California in 1848, thousands of people began flocking to the area. Approximately 300,000 people came to California from different regions, some by land, some by sea. During this period, called the Gold Rush period, many new mining areas, factories, roads, and villages were built. But this was the beginning of disaster for the forests. Gold mining and commercial logging became the region's most important economy. At that time, people were making almost all kinds of materials from these trees. Both coast redwoods and giant redwoods were cut down. Giant sequoias were very useful. Giant sequoias were especially used as industrial materials. Companies were trying to keep up with the growing economy and acquire more timber. Despite all this, they could not cut down huge trees like General Sherman with the manpower and technology of that time. Therefore, they preferred to cut down trees of relatively small size. But even these were actually very, very large. It sometimes took several weeks to cut down a giant sequoia tree. Eureka was the lumber center of California at the time. There were nine sawmills in Eureka in 1853 and 22 in 1900. This number increased even more in the following years. Lumber was sold outside California and even the continent. Towards the end of the 19th century, large trees began to disappear. There were also constant sales of land to companies. The development of engine technology in the 20th century made cutting and transporting trees easier. 
Deforestation has now become seriously visible. Only 5% of old-growth redwood trees have survived since those days. But people were starting to realize something was wrong. In 1918, a conservation organization called the Save the Redwoods League emerged. This union, which is also a white supremacist, purchased thousands of acres of land and protected the redwoods. On the other hand, over time, organizations such as Kings Canyon National Park or Sequoia National Park were established to protect the redwoods. Today, there are many more of these parks and conservation efforts are still continuing. For centuries, these trees have been revered and admired by locals, explorers, naturalists, and tourists. They have also inspired many artists, writers, and scientists. Even today, they are representatives of longevity, naturalness, and resilience. We hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new about redwood trees. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for interesting and informative content. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.